Hey there and welcome to This Week in Indie Gaming, where today we check out some of the latest games and indie news of note from the past week or so. Coming up, we dive into Minute Racer, check out the latest from Annapurna Interactive and dive once more into a sea of solitude. And with that, let's jump straight in. Up first, and for many, one of the most hotly anticipated indie game narrative puzzlers of the year so far, Maquette dropped earlier in the week, with it being the debut game from San Francisco-based developer Grateful Decay, with it also coming out via Annapurna Interactive, who happened to be one of our favourite indie game publishers of the past few years. Like many games of this outlet, Maquette's strength comes from its combination of design, storytelling and soundtrack that has the power and ability to stay with you front and mind long after you've finished, with its four or five hours of playtime. The story overall feels delightfully paced, with it featuring a tale of love and romance between two artists, voiced by Bruce Howard from Black Mirror and Jurassic World, and Seth Gable from Fringe and Salem. The dialogue, phrasing and how everything has been pulled together makes for a totally credible and authentic relationship tale. At times, we have discussed with a few others in the days since we saw the credits roll, Maquette isn't perhaps up there on the same level as let's say what remains of Edith Finch or Gone Home, although in retrospect that phrase on its own feels perhaps a little bit unfair. It does however feel a little bit let down in some places, particularly with the puzzling where perhaps our slightly aging grey matter took a little bit too long to figure out what we were supposed to do. In some instances, while things felt just a little bit disjointed, we tended to sit and try and figure out things before at times going down the puzzle solution by guesswork approach, which can as you might expect be hit and miss, although when the solutions did present themselves by luck or reasoned choices, they do manage to create a sense of achievement like all good puzzlers do and should. Further talk of the discussions of the ins and outs would be hugely spoilery of this game, although when the end does come, well it didn't end up taking the direction we thought it might and that alone warrants another playthrough as does the brilliantly sublime soundtrack and one we're quite sure will end up in any number of end of the year rundowns. We picked up our version of Maquette for the PlayStation 4, free via the PlayStation Plus service that we pay for out of our own pocket. Maquette is also to play right now for the PlayStation 5 and PC via the Steam storefront. Up next, and actually from a few weeks ago, although we beg your pardon for such a timeline transgression, and yet Minute Fun Racer is an utterly fun and totally fantastic, peculiar little racing game of sorts that takes place within the Minute Universe as it were, a game we so dearly loved when it first came out around this time two years or so ago. Minute Racer follows a similar premise time-wise to the original game. Well, it all starts with 10 second rounds, where you're able to increase the clock via upgrades here and there, as you can also increase the strength or power of your bike. It really is super enjoyable, and like the original, there's something so brilliantly cute about the monochrome one-bit style overall look and feel. Furthermore, all the proceeds are set to go to charity, the first of these being Médecins Sans Frontières, with the charity set to move to other causes over the game's life cycle. Moving swiftly on and another game we picked up earlier in the week and for full disclosure, we were gifted a review of Revita for review purposes. As many viewers will already know over the years, we've banged on and on about our love for twin stick shooters and roguelikes and in this one, well we've got a mix of both of these genres. As you can see from the footage here captured on PC, Revita is a 2D side-scrolling game with it featuring some beautifully put together, if perhaps for some a little too chunky pixel art with this game, which is out in early access, all about a person heading up a tower of procedurally generated rooms in order to retrieve their memories. As perhaps could be expected, you clear out each room of enemies with them containing some genuinely funny sprite works, all sorts of environmental hazards with you finding and unlocking power-ups and strength increases along the way. In an interesting twist, one of the ways in which to gain additional power or weaponry is by sacrificing your health. You can choose to do this at various stages within each run, with it giving you that little bit of extra risk versus reward for players to think about. As for your character, 
Well, the base version of you and you once you upgrade is really rather susceptible to enemies and their various projectiles, with it being really easy to go from a full health meter to barely having any within a blink of an eye. Revita within its early access model is a tough challenge. It's not as tough as, let's say, oh, Super Meat Boy, although the developers know this and they have added a number of accessibility options. Think what the folks did with Celeste a few years ago to help those of us, like us, without cat-like reflexes, which again is a great little touch. You can slow down time, turn on auto-aim and much more. Many of these choices also having a sliding scale of how they're applied in the game, so again, players are able to tailor these accessibility options how and so they desire. In any case, all of this comes from a single developer, and having spent a good few hours with this over the past week, Revita has the potential to become a great game and one fans of the genres might readily take to. The full version will of course have additional content, more weapons, upgrades, more enemies, although looking from the Steam homepage at the moment, there's no word when this might release within its 1.0 format. So yes, Revita within its early access variant can be picked up right now via Steam. Up next, in the first of two games we've played this week that have come out on the Nintendo Switch, March the 4th sees the release of the director's cut of Sea of Solitude. Now this game first came out in the summer of 2019, and we played it all the way back then on the PlayStation 4, although to be honest, we did find the game a little bit wanting. We wanted just a bit more from it, particularly in some of the ways the story panned out, and again, to be perhaps brutally honest, just didn't quite hit the mark. So what's changed this time around with this new director's cut? Well, as it turns out, quite a lot. The overall emotional adventure is still there. It's still what it was back in 2019, you play as K, where again you're facing off against beasts and the like, within a story that remains focused towards depression, loneliness and abandonment. The game has, however, seen a complete rewrite of the overall script, a new cast of voice actors and changes to the game's cutscenes and associated animations that just do a darn sight better job at getting to the overall story and gameplay elements, well, it just gels that much better altogether. In a few words, this exclusive Switch update really does feel a huge improvement in the game's overall delivery and experience that feels more complete from an end-to-end -end perspective than the original release. Up next, and the last game we played out this week we wanted to show off in this weekly rundown came out a few days ago for the Switch, although it has been out for PC since the summer of last year. Wind Peaks is a hidden object game, although one that's ever so slightly different from the usual single screen hide and seek games that borrow from the Where's Wally playbook. Where Wind Peaks picks things up is how it not only uses a search and discover mechanism, but also a search, discover and interact method where in some cases Having found the item you need, well, you need to move them around the level to a different place, which in turn will further open things up for additional discoveries. As with all hidden object games, Wind Peaks can be a delightful time sink, although there are one or two missteps along the way, with it only lasting around an hour to two hours sort of mark, and when the end comes, it does feel a little bit abrupt. However, there's plenty of reason to think a follow-up will be forthcoming, and if so, well, we look forward to once again heading off within Wind Peaks. So there we go, that's all we have time for for this episode of This Week in Indie Gaming. We hope you have a wonderful weekend, and if you like this series, please let us know down in the comments. Either way, many thanks for watching, and we look forward to seeing you all here again soon for more indie game videos.